Hi, this is uh, Bob from Hobby Concepts. Today, I'm going to take my uh, HG Models P802 Hemet, and I am going to install a six-channel radio. Uh, one of the things I plan on doing with this, as I build the trailer and start do some detailing, is adding some lights and functions, and I needed more channels. Plus, I wanted a computer radio. Uh, the radio that came with it works, but it's not the best in the world. So I'm going to show you how to set up and install this six channel radio. I also have another video on how to modify this six channel radio so look in the description for a link to that video. Um, it's a, only about a sixty dollar upgrade and really a nice uh, upgrade for this truck. So let's get started. I have a lot of things I want to do to my Hemet. I'm going to uh, paint it, weather it, add some more detail, and build a trailer for it. So, to start on that, one of the first things I want to do is put a six-channel radio in. I need more channels. I like the Energy TGY i6 radios. Uh, they're just a great little radio, computer radio, and easy to modify for a centering left stick. Now, I have a, a separate video I've done on modifying this radio. I'll put a link in the description. But it's important because you want your throttle here and your steering here. We have additional functions here and here. And it has a nice selection of switches. There's a three position switch, a couple two position switch, and knobs. And you can assign any channel to any one of those functions. So I'll be able to assign my, uh, for example, my transmission shifting. Uh, maybe a winch in and out. Maybe lights on and off. I, I don't know exactly what I'm going to assign yet. So I'm going to install this radio and uh, that's going to be the focus of this first video is just putting this radio in the truck. Also, uh, I'm planning my trailer. So the trailer is uh, going to be 42 and a half inches long. It's the same width as the vehicle. This is a, a picture of a Hemet with this trailer with a with a uh, bulldozer on it, which is what I'm going to do. There's a couple of really beautiful uh, metal bulldozers that would look just fantastic on here. They're RC, you know, three, four thousand dollar range. I'm not going to be able to do that. So for my trailer, I got this Bruder uh, Caterpillar dozer, which will actually I think look really good. It's it's uh, compared very nicely to the picture. The only difference with the military version is it's armored around here and obviously it's painted a different color. So I'll probably RC this and paint it uh, to be a military dozer for my trailer. The other thing I got to start with is this Tamiya 40 foot uh, container trailer. I got this because it's got three axles um, and uh, all kinds of metal frame parts. There's a lot of pieces and parts in here I can use. Uh, the container I can build and I'll probably build it and sell it, but I want the axles, I want the tires, I want to use that stuff to frame up my trailer. I'll probably need to get a lot more aluminum. So, uh, upcoming video will be building this trailer for the Hemet for a, uh, a dozer. Also, I got this really nice decal sheet um, that's designed for the uh, 16th scale Abrams tank. And uh, although I don't need tank decals, the V's, a lot of the small lettering, it's got all kinds of great little uh, detail markings that'll look terrific on this truck. So I'm going to use that to, uh, to do some of the extra detailing. So right now I want to go ahead and do this uh, six channel radio. Before I install the radio, I've always, I mentioned before how much of a pain it is to remove this rear bumper that's screwed on to put batteries in. So I decided my easy way to fix it was just to get a huge battery. This is a Turnigy 5000 milliamp battery. I figured it'll run this thing for half a day and then I don't have to take the battery out. I can just charge it whenever I want to and leave it right in the truck. It fits in the battery tray just fine.
and I might ex make a little extension for this LiPo charging lead so I can just pull it out through the side here to charge it. So that'll take care of my uh, my battery issue that I've had and give me power to do all the tests I want. As I install uh, the receiver in this truck, I, I just unplugged the old receiver and this is the Turnigy receiver. The wiring in this vehicle is very unusual. There's a 20 amp battery eliminator um, circuit on the other side. Let me just flip it around here. There's this 20 amp battery eliminator and it has a, a master plug here and you can see the yellow and the orange lead you can see the white red and black lead so we've got our positive and negative power our white sense line and yellow and orange sense lines now the uh, the orange sense line is the steering the yellow sense line is the throttle and the white sense line is the shifting uh, those run out and split and go over to the receiver side the reason they did this, I'm positive, is the the uh, 15 amp power requirement for the uh, battery eliminator. The, the speed control probably doesn't have enough power to drive the two heavy duty steering servos at the same time. So I understand why they did it, but it does make the wiring a little complicated. My guess is I could probably pull the speed control in this out and put a different speed control with a little heavier eliminator in here and drive everything off the receiver on this side but I'm gonna leave that and just install the receiver so the receiver you can see the the yellow and the orange line the way these receivers work is that the blacks are all tied together and the reds are all tied together so there's your negative and positive so really you only need the sense lines this one provides the power for the receiver so this has to be plugged in for the receiver to work so I have plugged this is the shifting I plugged it into channel 5 I've plugged the uh, steering into channel 1 and the, and the throttle into channel 3 so uh, we should be able to have um, steering and throttle. So I'm gonna come back here in just a second. Okay, I just wanted to reposition my camera. So I'm gonna turn this radio on. All the switches have to be up. That has to be down. And I'm gonna plug my battery in here. Okay, all right, so I've got steering, and I move this to the right, and it goes right, and move to the left, and it goes left. So we've got that hooked up. Throttle. Okay. Throttle, so we have uh, forward, and that's going forward, and reverse is going reverse. So that hooked up just fine. Now what I want to do is decide what switch I want to have what function on. So I've decided that I want to have the shift on this nice tall switch right here. So I'm going to show how to program that and then we'll put this shift line in the proper sequence and I'll probably put the, the servo that disconnects the trailer, I'll probably put it on this switch right here. So I'll come back, we'll focus on the radio for a minute. Okay, programming on this radio. Um, all the switches are in the up position, I'll turn the radio on. I have to blip that down for a second to turn off the alarm. I'm going to press and hold the OK button to get into the menu. We'll look at the system menu first, I'll press OK. 
model name. Well, that's a good thing to start with, so we'll go down here to model name and press OK. And then we can just scroll through these letters with the up and down button until we get where we want. So we're going to go with the H. Automatically moves to the next uh, digit. We're going to go with a capital E. OK. We'll go with a uh, capital M. And I'm going to go ahead and select the rest of these and then I'll come back. Okay, you can see my model name is H-E-M-T-T. -T. The instructions are unclear about this, but to save it, you just press and hold the cancel key. Alright, that goes back. Now we should be able to go back to the main menu and our name is right there. Okay, so now we want to select which switch goes to uh, which function on the receiver. And again, I'm going to use this taller switch here for the shifting. So we'll put that on channel 5. So again, we go to the menu. We go to the setup menu. And we go aux channel. So we go down here to aux channels. Click OK. Channel 5 is, and it says here the source. Right now the source is, is VRB, but we want the source to be SWB, which is switch B. So, we're going to just go to where it says SWB, press and hold the cancel button. Cancel. Cancel. Okay, now we'll plug this in. Okay, so what I've done is I've assigned this to channel 5. So I have plugged in the white, red, and black here to channel 5. We'll plug in the vehicle. And now our shifting is on channel 5. Uh, you can hear the servo working. I, don't, I know you can't see it from that angle, but uh, that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to put the, the coupler release on this switch, which is SWD. So we'll do that the same way. I'm going to reposition the camera here. Same as the exact uh, method. We'll hold down the OK button here. Gives us the menu. Go to the setup menu. Press OK. Go down here to aux channels. Press OK. Didn't want to do that. Want to leave that SRB. We want to go OK down here to channel six, and it's SWD. So we're going to just go through these until it says SWD. Press and hold the cancel button. So now that switch SWD will be our coupler release. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. Now one of the problems. is that the the wire for that is really short so I can't even show you how I plug it in but I'm gonna plug that in and I'm gonna tuck this receiver back in the box final little hurdle here is this uh, receiver doesn't fit in this box plugs are too tall so what I'm gonna do is take my my trusty Dremel and just cut the bottom out. I've removed these little tanks off the bottom. I pulled the screws on this so I could tilt the deck up. So I'll cut that out. It should give me enough uh, room to fit the receiver in there. Got my radio all installed, so I got my steering, throttle, shift. And my coupler. The only uh, thing I want to change is I want to change the direction of the coupler because I'd like it to be uh, uncoupled when the switch is up. 
which would be the default position. So I'll uh, do that uh, programming here. For the forward reverse programming, we go to the menu, we go to setup, reverse, and then we did, remember we plug that into channel 6. So we go here to channel 6, reverse it. Okay, so now the default position is unlocked. And there's locked. That's just what we wanted. So we press and hold the cancel button. And that completes the radio installation. So um, now I have a six channel radio. I'm only using four channels. I've got two spares. I've got this three position switch, which I'll probably put to operate lights. And then I've got a couple rotary knobs and another switch. I'll uh, figure out which one I want to do what. But I'll probably get a winch on here too. So that's how to put a, uh, a six channel radio in this vehicle. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing a lot of Hemet upgrades starting pretty soon here, including the trailer and uh, some painting and detailing. So uh, stay tuned. Thanks again for watching.